Greetings, everybody, from the dank basement. Hi, Michael. I'm uh, entering your snuff contest, but I don't want your damn snuff. I will not accept your damn snuff. I like everything you're giving away, and I think you're a putz for giving it all away. But, you know, because, you know, but, hey, you're going to do what you're going to do, right? Because you are a young, pig-headed, strong-willed young man from Kentucky. And there's not a damn thing I can do about it. But no, I don't want your freaking snuff. You just take it, give it to give it to the sisters at a convent. Let's get some nuns snuffing. We need snuffing nuns. I think it's a great idea. And you could be the first one to start that trend. Donate snuff to convents week. I think it'd be awesome. Get those nuns snuffing. But I don't want your snuff. How did I get started? 1976. It wasn't because I was trying to quit smoking. It was because I had turned 18 and I was trying to try every kind of tobacco product that was available at the time because I could finally legally do so. Didn't want to smoke cigarettes so much. I had smoked cigarettes in high school. Uh, my parents smoked. Both of my parents were like, well, my dad was a four pack a day guy. My mom was like a pack and a half a day lady. <laughs> we would travel, you know, in car trips in the wintertime with all the windows rolled up and my mom and dad both doing the chimney routine in the front seat. It was really pleasant. So I wasn't too into cigarettes. Tried smoking a pipe. Didn't really work out for me. I got kind of taken at a, a local tobacco store. They sold me a really crappy basket pipe that didn't even draw correctly. Now I know better, but at the time I shelled out 20 bucks, which in 1976 was a lot of money for something that was supposedly a Savinelli second. And, uh, it was just junk, and I smoked crappy tobacco, really bad drugstore tobacco. I smoked it wrong. So I started to kind of give up on that. I never liked cigars. They were too strong for me because I kept trying to inhale the big things, you know. So one day I was looking <clears throat> at my local tobacco shop at a shopping mall near my parents' home, and they had four, I'm sorry, five different offerings for nasal snuff. They had Ozona Orange, Cherry, and... Just something just called Ozona Snuff, which I think is just menthol, maybe. Or maybe it's peppermint. I don't know. I, I don't think I've ever had it. Then they had the President Snuff from Ozona. And the only oddball in the bunch was some English-made Dr. Rumney's Mentholyptus Snuff, which I've also bought. We used to use the Mentholyptus as kind of a test of manhood. Can you step up to the pain? One of those kind of deals. My younger brothers were all over me to sniff it and then fall on the floor screaming, holding their burning faces, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, kid stuff, right? And then the Ozona snuffs I never really liked it because I hated the freaking round tap boxes because they were using those at the time instead of the little, you know, five gram pull apart like Wilson's tins. They were using these bad, like, toke silver dollar, terrible, great old coffee, horrible. Uh, round tap tins. So I never liked it. And after a while, cigarettes became easier, more readily available. I didn't have to go to the tobacco store. I could buy them in every grocery store. Most restaurants and bars had at least machines that vended cigarettes. Cigarettes, when I started smoking, were 75 cents a pack in vending machines. So, and 60 cents at the grocery store. So that, why not just smoke? You know, it was... So I stayed away from snuff for 30 years. In about 2006, I discovered snuff again. I was looking around on the internet. I found snuff.me.uk. I ordered my first snuffs from them. And then, just on a whim, I wrote Delakia a snail mail letter. And I said, I don't know anything about your snuffs. Can you help me out? And at the time, they only had the Delakia snuffs. And they did not have Swiss chocolate. And they did not have toasted. What they offered were Sparrow, Sparrow Cool, Manjul, and Ganga. And they sent me three. I think they might have offered Kamal, too, because I think I got 15 packets total, 15 sachets. They actually sent me three packs of each with a very nice letter uh, describing how they made their snuffs. Wish I still had the letter, but more importantly, the silk mailing bag, the hand-stitched silk mailing bag. They did not send it to the padded mailer. It was sent on this cloth bag to save money on uh, airmail weight, I presume. Now, I don't have any of those Delacchia snuffs anymore, sadly, but I have kept one of my snuffs from that 2006 order for a couple of reasons. This I've done a video on this already. This is the Herschel 
Silverstone Orange, made in Spain for Perschel, and it's unique for two reasons. The best natural orange scent in the world. Nobody has come close since. I guess the closest that comes to this might be either the Toke St. Clemens or the Samuel Goweth Mandarin, but even those are not close. This is like the most precious orange ever. I still have some. They don't make it anymore. That's one reason it's noteworthy, but the other reason it's noteworthy, it's Perschel, and there's no menthol in it. Not one scintilla of menthol. Starting in 2006, I, I came to, snow, to, to try snuffing again. Aside from the Silverstone, I really didn't like anything that I had. The Delacchia was too hard for me to snuff because it was finely ground. The Toke original sucked. The Toke peppermint sucked. The plastic bullets they were selling it in at the time kept jamming, and I hated snuff again. And I put it all away. And then about two and a half, three years ago, I started buying snuff like a madman because I wanted to try all the flavors. And uh, Mr. Snuff was there, and <clears throat> they started giving free shipping if you bought a pile of stuff. So I would buy a pile of stuff to get the cheaper or free shipping. And then I just started doing YouTube reviews so I would have an excuse to buy more snuff. And that's my story from little tiny seeds at the local mall when I was 19 blossom this horrifying snuff psychosis. But Michael, I do not want your 80 grams of snuff. What I want is for you to get a bunch more subscribers. So if you out there in YouTube land are watching this and have not subscribed, there is something very wrong with you. See, Michael is the kind of guy, he's got such a nicely developed nose just right out of the gate that he can snuff a snuff and decide instantly if he loves it or hates it. Sometimes that kind of straight-to-the-point, no-bullshit, quick-cut clarity is what we need in this hobby. You know, most snuff reviewers would take a few hours with a snuff, but Michael doesn't seem to need to. He just woofs it up, and it's yes or no, I or nay, and it's either in the rotation or out the door. And boy, I, I can't do that, so I, that's a skill that Michael has that I don't. So you maybe want to subscribe to his channel, God knows. His reviews and videos are usually a hell of a lot shorter than this one. From the Dank Basement, congratulations, Michael, on hitting YouTube. You're doing a great job with your reviews. Uh, and I can say that because I agree with you about 90% of your reviews. So to me, they're great reviews. And I enjoy talking with you on Skype. I hope the learning to smoke a pipe is going as well for you as it is for me. And a big hug to Mrs. Kentucky Snuff. God bless you, man. And thanks for the contest.